Praise the Lord from all blessings flow. My name is Sean Henry Scott Sr. I am the visionary and founder of Team Jesus USA, Team Jesus USA Church, Team Jesus International, Hand of God Live, which is our platform which we preach the gospel of Jesus Christ live from. Today is our midweek miracle sermon. In our ministry, we come before you two times on a calendar week where we share the gospel of Jesus Christ. Once is on a Sabbath and then again on a midweek miracle. And we also share daily through Morning Glory or Feed My Sheep. I have different series that the Lord has given me in platforms that I minister from just to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. And I'm a firm believer that if you're a preacher, preach, you're a singer, sing, you're a prophet, prophesy, you're an apostle, apostolized, whatever God has called and created you to do, that is what you should be doing, period. I'm a firm believer of that. So today we're going to be sharing a series that we're on in this Midweek Miracle. <clears throat> concerning the Jesus Christ series. Jesus Christ series where we're literally preaching and teaching out of the King James Version of the Bible the life of our Savior and Lord Jesus Christ from prophecy to birth to young man which is what we'll be talking about today to his life and ministry, the beginning of his ministry and, and that's going to take a while when we get into that because we know all the things that he did um, during his ministry, so we're going to be walking through that. Then his crucifixion, what well, persecution and crucifixion, because they beat him, and, and then we'll talk about the crucifixion, obviously, and then we're going to get into the um, uh, resurrection, and then the fact that he's coming back. And and we're not in a rush, like I keep sharing on this series. We're going to take our time and do it. We only deviate on this series on the days of the feast where we minister and preach on the feast. We just taught and shared about Purim which we observed this past Sabbath and we'll, the next one obviously will be Passover so we'll be sharing with, about Passover soon so we only deviate from this particular series, the Jesus Christ series to talk about the feast which is really about him anyway but we want to make sure we help people understand the times, Moedim the appointed times that God has placed in his own hands because if you don't understand the times you don't understand what you should be doing when you should be doing it. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we thank and praise you for another day, another opportunity to do what we believe mostly you've called and created us to do, which is to be a witness. Um, you was heavy in my spirit on yesterday, Father God, speaking about darkness and where we're, uh, we're dark, darkness prevails as the absence of light. And you literally showed me the illustration of being in a big, huge auditorium style ministry church and it was thousands of people and you showed me preaching and you showed I, I shared with people in the absence of light darkness prevails and at that particular time I had them turn the lights out and it was pitch black dark and the people thought something was wrong the power went out but it was just giving the illustration that when we fail to share you the light of the world to a dying world they are lost I just pray, Father God, to continue to use this platform to do what you've called, created me to do. Have your will and your way. A lot of words in my mouth and the meditation of my heart to be pleasing in your sight. In Jesus Christ's name, we pray. Hallelujah and amen. Like I said, we'll be speaking about Jesus as a young man. It's after he was born. He was already walking and talking, doing anything on his own. So that's where we're at in this series. And if you have missed any of the previous preachings, you can go back and go to YouTube, Hand of God Live on YouTube or go to the videos in Facebook or Instagram or wherever you platforms you desire and, and see the previous words that was preached. Today we'll be beginning in Isaiah 53. We're going to read 1 through 7. And like I said, we are speaking about Jesus as a young man and so much prophecy was given concerning our Savior and Lord. I like to say Savior first because He saved you and then we make Him Lord of our lives. So we need to understand that so many things was prophesied concerning of, of who he was, is, and is to come. In Isaiah chapter 53, verse 1, it says, Who hath believed our report? Question mark. And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? Question mark. Verse 2. Listen to this one. For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant. And as a root out of a dry ground, he have no form or comeliness. 
and when and when excuse me and when we shall see him there is no beauty that we should desire him verse 3 he is desired excuse me he is despised and rejected of men a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief and we hid as it were our faces from him he was despised and esteemed and we esteemed him not it says we esteemed him not verse 4 and 53 of Isaiah surely he had borne our griefs and carried our sorrows yet we did esteem him stricken smitten of God and afflicted but he was wounded for our transgressions he was bruised for our iniquities the chastisement of our peace was upon him and with his stripes we are healed. Verse 6. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord have laid on him the iniquity of us all. Finally verse 7. Yet, excuse me, he was oppressed and he was afflicted. Yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before her shearers is dumb. So he opened not his mouth. So we all know the he that Isaiah is talking about. Well, I might as well read on verse 8 and 53. He was taken from prison and from judgment, and who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off out of of the land of the living for the transgressions of my, of my people was he stricken verse 9 and 53 and he was made his great he excuse me and he made his grave and with the wicked with the wicked and with the rich in his death because he had done no violence neither was any deceit in his mouth verse 10 yet it pleased the lord to bruise him, he hath put him to grief. When thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed, he shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. Verse 11. He shall see the travail of, the, of his soul, and shall be satisfied. By his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many for he shall bear their iniquities therefore will I divide a, a portion with the great and shall divide the spoil with the strong because he hath poured out his soul unto death and he was numbered with the transgressors and he bear the sin of many and made intercession for the transgressors. So that's chapter 53 of Isaiah in its entirety. And verse 2 again I want to read. For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of the ground. He have no form nor comeliness. And when we shall see him there is no beauty that we should desire him. Now we need to understand that as we talk about Jesus and the prophecies concerning Jesus, you need to understand the context in which the scripture is explaining the things that he would fulfill. I share with people all the time when I'm preaching and teaching that um, Old Testament, 39 books of the Old Testament that we have in the King James Version of the Bible, is the foreshadow of the things that Jesus Christ will fulfill in the New Testament. That's why everybody that had the scrolls, all the Pharisees, scribes, Sadducees, all people who could afford the scrolls, and it is known as a known fact that the scroll of Isaiah in the Bible days was the equivalent of $50,000 of our money. So people like me could not afford a scroll of Isaiah in my house. So you had to go to the temple and hear them preach out of the scroll for you to understand. Now, for, they was preaching, like I said, the prof prophetic word concerning who Jesus Christ was, is, and is to come. So it was fulfilled in the New Testament. When Jesus showed up, 
He did everything. That's why in scripture, when he did things, that scripture might be fulfilled. That's what he continually says, that scripture might be fulfilled. That this must happen because scripture might. He fulfilled his word. He kept his word to his people. He fulfilled the things that he allowed them to speak about him concerning him. That's what he did. He made it clear that they understand that I'm doing this to fulfill scripture. Everything that I'm doing is to, to keep my word to my people who I have chosen. That's why the Bible says, my sheep hear my voice and another they won't follow. So when people won't follow, when you hear people out here talking about things concerning Jesus Christ that's not about him, they're not his. Because his sheep hear his voice, another they will not follow. And in Luke 24, 27, it says, And beginning at Moses and all the prophet, he expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning who? Himself. So the Bible, in essence, with all these isms and schisms that people come up with to argue and debate about, the Bible is about Jesus Christ. From cover to cover, Genesis to Revelation. Because it is in him that we move we live and we have our only being. When we have put our faith, hope, and trust in Jesus Christ, we understand that the word of the living God is about him. And when we allow ourselves to be conformed to the word and not the world, that's where we get everything. Our peace, our joy, our happiness, no matter what state we find ourselves in. I, I was driving yesterday and at every light here, there's a homeless person begging with a sign. And so at this particular light, I was sitting there for a long time and I gave the man something, um, and I, I was talking to him. So he immediately got into all his, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a veteran of, of uh, war, and I've been shot, he was showing me where he got shot and all this stuff. So he was spending all this time talking about all this stuff he went through, with basically trying to make me feel a certain way to continue to help him um, with his issues. Not understanding that he's talking to a preacher who understands that everything Jesus Christ went through, he went through so that we can have life. So I told the man, I said, hey, buddy, I drove past the cemetery. It was no noise in there. Wasn't nobody talking. Wasn't no grumbling. Wasn't no complaining. Wasn't no shouting. Wasn't no screaming. Wasn't no eating. Wasn't no drinking. Because everybody was dead. I said, if you don't have anything else, you have a life. And when you give your life to Jesus Christ, he will order your steps and put you in a position to, even if you are homeless, you are content in that and you're not out here begging. Because the Bible says, I've never seen a righteous forsaken nor a seed begging bread. So when you fall under the covenant of Jesus Christ, no matter where you find yourself, no matter what position you find yourself in, no matter what condition you find yourself in, you will be content. Because this peace I have, the world didn't give it, and the world can't take it away. The world only has power to take away what they have given. And if God will allow them to take something, it was never yours. That's the way it is. And not only that, he will give you double for your trouble if you stand and see the salvation of the Lord. So in Luke 24, 27, it says, and beginning at Moses. So where did Moses begin at? In Genesis. That's the beginning of the Bible. It says, beginning at Moses and all the prophets, not some of the prophets, every prophet, minor and major prophet, he expounded unto them. So you mean the Lord told them what to say and what to write? That's the difference between a prophet sent from God and a prophet who be prophet lying instead of prophet sign. Because if what you're telling me I can't find in the word of the living God, who are you speaking from? If you're prophesying to me and telling me something, you saying my God said, first of all, it should not be breaking news to me. It should be confirmation. Because if I have a relationship with God and I've been abiding by reading and praying and walking with the Lord and doing what he's called and created me to do, I have a daily in a constant relationship with my Savior and Lord Jesus Christ. So when you come and say, the Lord told me to tell you this, it should be confirmation on what he already is. It's not breaking news. So if a prophet is claiming to tell you something, and it's something you've never heard before, and it's breaking news, something's wrong with your relationship. Especially if you've been going to church for a very, 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 very long time. A new convert, I can understand them being told things by a prophet to help keep them from falling or stumbling or messing up because they don't know how to understand the scriptures yet. They may or may not have the Holy Spirit evidence by speaking other tongues. But if you've been walking with the Lord, got the Holy Ghost, when somebody prophesied to you, it should be something that the Word, the Lord has already told you and they're confirming it to help you strengthen your faith and obey what he's told you to do. See, the, 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 people, I was at a meeting on, on last Sabbath 
and a guy, a young man, asked uh, somebody to stand up in the crowd and he started prophesying to him. And based off the response of the recipient, I don't believe that word was for them. Because what happened at the well, we're going to get on with the lesson, what happened at the well when Jesus prophesied? She said, I perceive you are a prophet. Jesus told her, he said, she, I met a man who told me everything about me. So when I don't know where these guys and people get off in 2024 talk about their prophet, but they, they ain't telling you nothing. You ain't saying nothing. You're not telling me anything. You're not saying nothing. You're saying you're a prophet, but you're not saying nothing. You're not telling me anything that God said to me. You're just talking based off what your eyes is showing you. When we know now faith is the substance of things, hope for the evidence of things not seen. So we got to be careful with that. And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them in all the scripture, the things, because all the scripture, the things concerning himself. That's what he said. So we're going to get into the only part of the Bible that speaks about Jesus as a young man. There's a big, big, huge gap. Which, you know, he even said in the word that the earth cannot contain the things that he did when he walked the earth. The, it, 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 the books can't contain the things. So, and honestly, I we, we don't need nothing else to debate about, family. I'm glad we only got 66 books. 39 and 27 because people debate and argue over this. Can you imagine how much more arguing and debate there would be if Jesus had wrote down every single thing he did from birth to crucifixion to resurrection? People can't get right what we got now. And I'm talking about major ministries and churches and, and people just following these people. It's like, did you hear what so-and-so said? I, I'm, not, I'm not really upset about what he said. I'm upset that people are still following him. Isn't it amazing, and we're going to move on, but I feel the need to say what I'm saying. It's amazing how somebody can say something off the wall crazy, don't even make no sense, and it will go viral. But when we talk about Jesus, miracles, signs, and wonders, the power of God, it don't go viral. It don't. A, a, a singer slash preacher, whatever he calls himself, being I ain't dropping no names, can say something crazy on a secular uh, uh, podcast show and it's, it's all over the world. People reposting and sharing, just saying something crazy. But the goodness, it was a meeting we just had this past Sabbath and some, some miracles took place, some signs took place, some wonders took place. People got healed, blessed, delivered. People got saved and baptized. And, and, and an hour after the event, no one's even talking about it no more. But let somebody say something crazy. We we gonna hear about it for Lord knows how long, and we wonder why things are the way they are. So here in Luke chapter two, we've already surpassed the birth of Jesus, the prophecy of Jesus, and the birth of Jesus. Now we're gonna talk about him as a young man, and um, like I said, there's not a lot of scriptures that deal with this fact. I didn't want to turn this fan on because I didn't want to blow my Bible, but starting to get a little hot in here. Got the air on, but it kicked off. Let me stop it right there so I won't blow my pages. In Luke chapter 2, we're going to talk about Jesus as a young boy. And I have a very <laughs> colorful imagination. And God made me a bit of a comedian, so <laughs> Jesus being he, who he was, is, and is to come you know, seeing him as a child, can you, you know, can you imagine other kid, <laughs> other kids playing with Jesus, and he being Jesus, <laughs> has to be a, had to been an awesome thing, and he, you know, I understand who he was very humble and meek, and there was no sin in him, so he, you know, I'm, 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 I'm thinking as a human, but, you know, it would just, it just had to been an amazing time, an amazing thing. Um, if, if those people were alive today, which they're not obviously from the Bible days, who, who, who actually physically saw Jesus do the things he did and got to be around him, it had to be an amazing thing that, that like, you know, to see the stuff that went on. And, and we, 
He allows us to see miracles. The Holy Spirit allows us to witness miracles today. It's not over. I try and share people, you know, I'm so disappointed when I go to meetings and it's a meeting and, and, and nothing happens. Because where there are two or three gathered in his name, there he's in the midst. So we have the power of Almighty God in the midst of us. And all we want to talk about is, is bills and problems with spouses and kids. We have the answer, the Almighty God in the midst of us. And this is what we're doing. We, we are missing it bad, family. We're missing it. We are missing it. This experience is so short. The Bible says life is like a vapor. We're here and then we're gone. You think I want to spend any of this, this experience that angels can't do, no one else can do but us, humans? Animals can't experience God the way we do? You think I want to waste any of this experience talking about the things that God has already overcome for us? Whining and complaining about things we don't have, that we don't like? We will miss it. And I say we because we in this thing together. That's why I want to turn this, blow on my Bible a little bit. So like I said, we passed the birth of Jesus. And then we get into, it goes all the way to 40. We want to get into him as a young man. The scripture don't talk a lot about him being a young man, but the things it does give us, it gives us revelation on things we need to take notice of in our lives that we can apply and gain wisdom and knowledge and faith from. So we're going to start at... We're in Luke, Gospel according to Luke chapter 2, we're going to start verse 21. And when, and, and when eight days were accomplished for the circumcising of the child, his name was called Jesus, which was so named of the angel before he was conceived in the womb. So unfortunate that people spent so much time, his name wasn't Jesus, wasn't no J's. So you think, let me let me help you understand this real quick. So you think Almighty God, being omniscient and all-powerful, all-knowing, before we was even created on the face of the earth, would allow the creation of a version of a Bible and inspire people to write it and allow us to call him Jesus when that's not what he, he, he desired or wanted. That's the point I'm looking at. Instead, you got these people who are going to try and dig up some Aramaic or Hebrew or Latin and try and enforce that on today's times. Well, if you want to take out the fact that what no J's in that time, which it wasn't, and try and play, put that theology on this time, then you need to go park your car, you need to stop living in your house, you need to stop wearing the clothes you wear, quit brushing your teeth the way you do. Everything you do, you need to take back and go back to that time and do it. That's what's silly about these folks, trying to take away what God has given us to help us know Him better. Now be careful. I'm not saying he dumbed down the word, but what he did was make it so we could understand English. He gave us a language that we could understand and that we can worship him in spirit and in truth. Instead of them understanding that, they want to argue and debate that one fact. Not Job, Joseph, Joshua, but they want to, hey, Jesus, they ain't have no J's. It's silly, family. And when the days of purification, according to the law of Moses, were accomplished, they brought him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. Capital L. So that Mary and Joseph are being obedient and their steps are being ordered on how to parent Jesus. I share with parents all the time, if God blesses you with a man child or a woman child, he will give you instructions on how to raise them what they are to do, what they are supposed to be. That's why the Bible says, train up a child in the way he should go, he or she should go, and when they are old, they will not depart from that. Or it. That's what the Bible says. I can testify to that point because I heard stories of when I was a child how they was raising me. I can testify to that point. I don't know why this thing said the microphone is off. Hey, Brian, you on Instagram? My, my little microphone thing just came on. Make sure you can hear me. Crazy phones. 
these, these technology. I just want to make sure everything is okay. So when we when we raise up, when God blesses us, because first of all, can't nobody make no child. Can't nobody make no human. That's all God's business. I don't know why. I want to make sure. Okay, now it's gone. I did not touch that phone. It came on by itself. That's an old device I used to record. So Mary and Joseph, it says, And when the days in 22 in, in Luke, and when the days of purification according to the law of Moses were accomplished. There's so many things being said in that verse of scripture. So they're following the law of Moses, which is the law of God already, because God gave the law to Moses. Moses ain't know nothing. He was an Egyptian at one time. Well, he was an Israelite who was an Egyptian who was back to the Israelite, but he didn't he, he didn't even want to do what he was called to do. So we know that God gave him the law. So when he said the law of Moses, you're talking about the law of the Lord. And when days of purification according to the law of Moses were accomplished, they brought him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. I love the fact that it says that. We present our children to the Lord. I know so many people that be going through it. These kids, these kids, these... My, First of all, give them back to the Lord. Give them children to the Lord and things will be the way God intended for it to be. You know, we I've heard of people doing, and I'm a motorcycle rider, so I'm not hating no motorcycles, but people make a bigger deal out of bike blessings than children blessings. And I'm saying this into the atmosphere, into the air, and I, hope, I pray a lot of ministries catch hold of this revelation. Every year before the school year starts, they should make, they should do a huge a children blessing and anoint and pray for all them children before they enter into the school year every year they you know all the school shootings and do what, what these kids are doing in school in this generation you know why because you're ignoring them they're not a priority to you people are doing motorcycle blessings because they don't want nobody to wreck on no motorcycles which is all good and great and dandy but how are you doing bike blessings and you're not blessing the children before you send them back to school as, as, a, as a big giant thing and a thing to help them understand that they've been prayed for and that they're anointed and that people are praying for them see we, we haven't made the, the, the children a priority Mary and Joseph made Jesus a priority and what they're doing is teaching us how to make our children a priority so they're covered underneath the blood covenant that God gave us and when the days of purification according to the law of Moses were accomplished, they brought him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. So we need to present children to the Lord. Verse 23, as it is written in the law of the Lord, every male that opens the womb shall be called holy to the Lord. That, that's another powerful statement that I believe people miss. You hear what he just said? As it is written in the law of the Lord. It said the law of Moses at first, now it's saying the law of the Lord. Every male that opens the womb shall be called holy to the Lord. Holy means separate. It says every male. It didn't say boy. I mean, it didn't say white, black, green, yellow. Every male. So if you're questioning who you belong to, read the scripture. As is written in the law of the Lord, every male that opens the womb. Everybody I know came through the womb. Even Jesus. He said, well, I was a C-section. It means the same thing. However you came through your mother, you, you're separate to the Lord. Got these folks like, I, you know, my parents didn't want me. I ain't special. And Man, go back to your creator, excuse me, and understand who you are. Your identity can only be found in your creator. Your identity can't be found in another human. If humans could create humans, which they've been trying to do for Lord knows how long, this world would be a complete hot mess, and then they'd be trying to take glory for creation of humans. Like they're trying to take glory for the creation of everything else, which they didn't do. Let me move on. we got some things to cover. Verse 25. And behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon, and the same man was just and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel. And the Holy Ghost was upon him. Verse 26 in chapter 2 of Luke. And it was revealed unto him by the Holy Ghost. You hear that? It was revealed unto him by the Holy Ghost. Not TikTok. Not Twitter. Not even the scribes. Not the word the Bible. It was revealed unto him by the Holy Ghost that he should not see death before he hath seen the Lord Christ. There are so many times when I'm speaking to people and I ask them something. What did the Lord tell you? 
we be having a conversation about things that's going on and they have to make decisions and choices. And I simply ask them, what did God tell you? And nine times out of ten, because they're in conversation with me about this fact, they'll be like, um, um, I, I don't know. You know why you don't know? Because you're not spending time with him. You stand still till you see the salvation of the Lord. You stand still till you get an answer. You stand in that position. You don't move until you know this is what God wants you to do. There are some things that I want to do right now. I have the means to do them right now. But I am not moving until I know that's God's perfect will. Because his permissive will will allow you to do things that even you're not supposed to do. Because he gave us free will and free choice. But his per perfect will is not only when you do what he's telling you to do, but you're going to be blessed coming in and blessed going out. That's why when people say, well, it must have been God's will, he let me do it. No, he let you do what you wanted to do. He didn't. He's not going to strive and fight with you. It was his permissive will, but his perfect will was for you not to be in debt. But you had to have what you wanted so bad, you did it anyway. It's his perfect will that, that you... That, that you have, that he will bless you and there will not be no sorrow added with you. So, sorrow added with it. But you just had to do it your way. That's his permissive will. His perfect will is when it is blessings on top of blessings. Not only did you get what you went for because it was a timing for it, but it didn't financially hurt you. It didn't mess with it. It's, a, it's an obvious thing, family, when we mature and walk in Christ. These things are, are, are elementary. Unless you're going to a church where the word ain't preached and you ain't got no faith. Verse 26 in chapter 2 of Luke. And I ain't trying to throw shade, but it's the truth. And it was revealed unto him by the Holy Ghost. So if things ain't being revealed by the Holy Ghost, how are you getting them? That he should not see death before he has seen the Lord Christ. Capital L, capital C. And he came by the Spirit into the temple. See? It was revealed to him by the Holy Spirit. Then the Holy Spirit telling him where to go. People are like, man, Sean, how do you know how to do that? The Holy Spirit. Man, how do you know how to do that? The Holy Ghost. You know, by faith, I design t-shirts. And I usually do a hundred at a time. Can you imagine me missing God and printing a hundred t-shirts? And every time I go out here to do witness web ministry, people are like, nobody touch them. So I'm stuck with a hundred t-shirts of a design that nobody wants or likes. That I can't even give away. I've learned... And I'm not talking about me. I'm not trying to puff myself up because Lord knows I, I still got a lot of work to do. I've learned to listen to God and the Holy Ghost because it is expensive and painful to miss God. Lord have mercy. It will cost people. I, I know people who are old who've been missing God for 40 and 50 years. And watching them work their, their, their knuckles to the, to the bone. One day, one day, <laughs> you done missed one day. You about to see Jesus. You've been living your whole life talking about one day and saving and trying to fix your credit. You ain't need to do all that to get what God had for you. You done been bamboozled. The Bible says redeem the time because the days are evil. 